Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show. We have the details on the new bike from Gorilla Gravity, the Nirvana. We check out the Acto 5 bike. Possibly the most incredible Yeti ever. And it's quiz time yet again. Okay, so straight into news, and I'm gonna throw you over to Henry first up. So first up in the news, we have a new bike from Gorilla Gravity. Now, Gorilla Gravity as a brand, I think are doing some really cool stuff. You might have seen some of their carbon destruction videos on YouTube, super cool, worth checking out. But today we're gonna to be looking at the Narvana, which is a new bike with a new name. And the name I've seen come in for a bit of flack. I think it's, you know, I think it's a fine name. It's just, an, it's just a name. And it's infinitely better than any kind of crude innuendo or weird anagrams really that you see on some other brands. I think there's only so many times you can rock up to the trailhead on your stiffy before it's gonna wear at least a little. Now this bike is 29 inch front and back with 160 mil travel, but here's the cool bit. So it shares the same front triangle as the other bikes in Gorilla Gravity's range. It's their modular design. Now what that means is by changing the stays, you can basically change your whole bike. So if you were to do that, you would need to think about different shocks as well. But, you know, I mean, it's cool, it's adaptable. I think it's a, it, I think it's a cool way of approaching the problem. It's got another interesting feature. So what it does is it has adjustable reach via the headset. So you've got 10 mil to play with. This is really cool to basically get a bike that not only fits you better, but also your riding style. From the ground up, when you buy the bike on Gorilla Gravity's website, you do specify not only your height, but also your riding style. I think that's super, super cool. The bike uses a 63.7 degree head angle, as well as an effective seat tube angle of 76 degrees. There are loads of different prices and build options, so check out their website for more detail. Okay, next in news is we've spotted what appears to be the new TRP Trail Enduro, whatever you want to call it, rear derailleur. Uh, have a look at this picture here on screen of this amazing looking YT Jeff. So this one belongs to Angel Suarez. Uh, his Instagram page is going to be in the comments underneath this. Um, wow, what a beautiful looking bike. Uh, loving that sort of sand colorway on there with the orange fork and stuff. Like it looks trick, but that rear derailleur is quite different looking. Now, we've also seen the TRP derailleurs in the past. We've seen, in particular, the, uh, the downhill orientated one, Aaron Gwynn's one, in fact, that has a lockable cage. I'm just going to throw you to myself back at Eurobike uh, just to explain a little bit about that derailleur. So as you've probably seen on the back of Aaron Gwynn's bike, he's been running a no-named derailleur, and there's been a lot of speculation about it over the last year, but it has been announced it's TRP, and this is that derailleur. Now, it's got a couple of very cool things. So it's obviously a downhill-focused derailleur. You can tell by the size of this thing, the jockey cage is very small. It's seven-speed specific. Um, there, is, there isn't a spring in this one, just for demo. It's got a clutch on it. You can turn the clutch on and off. And it's actually a ratcheting design. So that was with no clutch. And you turn it on, and you can actually hear it, like, doing its thing. You can also adjust the tension of the clutch from the back and something that no other derailleur has got that I've just spotted is so you've got your regular cable clamp here, it works in a parallelogram orientation just like you would expect. You've got your stops and you've got your B screw or the B tension. Now the thing with the B tension is the derailleur actually pivots around here and apparently Aranguin hates his bike making noise so much so that he actually wears earplugs sometimes when he rides which, which I never knew so the TRP guys just told me that. So this actually has a locking feature so when you get it on, you get it set up in the correct position, you can lock it on. So the derailleur does not move in any way except for just the parallelogram that enables it to shift. If you want a silent downhill bike, that is a really good shout. And this of course is the shifter, so seven speed specific, specially designed for that TRP downhill derailleur. Uh, fits on using what appears to be the same as the SRAM fitting, so that does mean you can use conventional brackets on the bars. Uh, and it's obviously gonna work with their brake levers, but the cool thing I spotted on the bottom is you can actually change the orientation of the lever, 20 degrees in either direction to really suit the sort of uh, your ergonomics on the bar, get that exactly where you want it. That's clearly been the requirement of Aaron Gwynn as he helped develop this, he wanted that option of moving it around so you can change the position on your cockpit. As you know, it's all about feel on the bike, so if it feels good, it's gonna feel good to use. So, uh, well, there you go. Yes, yeah, so as you see, they've got a good hand and they're approaching things very differently. So, although there's no details yet on this latest TRP derailleur, I'm really excited to see what they have because I genuinely think that they've got something good tucked up their sleeve there. So, uh, well, more information as we get it. Back over to Henry. 
Chris King have now joined the Micro Spline Party, which is great news if you want to fit a Shimano group set to your Chris King hub. Now it's available with ceramic or steel bearings and in black or silver. And that's all the good news. The slightly less good news, it's quite expensive. How expensive? It's, it's a couple of, it's 313, 300, over $300. I mean, do you need both your kidneys? That's the only question you need to ask yourself. But jokes aside, Chris King do make really, really good stuff and people tend to buy their kit. Well, not just for kind of a throwaway weekend riding, but forever. Yes, it is expensive, but if it lasts, and let's face it, the hubs itself that it'll be going on to aren't exactly cheap either. Well, you know, some people, this is gonna be really, really useful for them. So it's good that they are bringing it to the market. Well, it's Chris King that, yeah, you buy Chris King once, don't you? That's the whole point of it, yeah. Expensive, but uh, arguably worth that money. Okay, so if I said Active 5 Cycles, would you know what I'm talking about? Now, recently I have not heard of them either. Uh, they're a small German brand, sounds like it's just one guy behind the brand. Uh, I actually spotted them when looking on the Formula Instagram page. And I spotted this bike that's on the screen. Yeah, it looks interesting, doesn't it? So it's a pretty low slung, it looks quite raked out, big wheels on there, it looks like it's fairly short travel, and it's got an idler wheel, so it's a high pivot design. So on screen here, this is the Acta 5 P train. So it's a 29 inch wheel bike, it's got 130 millimeters of rear travel. Of course, it's got that high pivot on it with the idler wheel system, like there's a few more images just buzzing past, past you as you can see now. Now it's got a 7075 series aluminium rear end on it, but it's got Reynolds 853 chromoly front end on it. So kind of interesting seeing the different uses of this. Um, like I said, it's got 130 mil travel. The geometry listed on the site is just for a size medium, but it's very, very progressive. So again, some more shots here, and we can list out some of this geometry. So it's got 480 mil reach on a medium, so that's a really good size. Uh, 1216 millimeter wheelbase, something more akin to a size large, uh, or even a size extra large if you're looking back a few years now. Uh, 434 millimeter chain stay, it's a at sag point. Uh, so it's about 425 uh, just static, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, 66 degree head angle, so nothing too crazy. I think that's a good amount there. 77 degree seat angle though, so that's really pitched forwards for a really efficient climbing position. And of course that uh, makes the most of that bigger reach as well. Everything is into sort of, uh, it's into perspective. So it's got a very high anti-squat value by having a pivot up there. Um, but also by maximizing on it, it's got no kickback or anything. They get around this by rooting the chain over the top. As we know, high pivots are really, really good for riding into things because of the axle path, but also the axle path is what does make them a bit of a pain if you're trying to route the chain in a normal convention. So by running the chain over the top, it's actually rides a bit more like a low pivot bike. You've got all the benefits of that rearward axle path on there. Now, something interesting about, I don't know in relation to this bike in particular, but I was chatting to Sandy when I was at a trailhead recently, and he's got one of those forbidden bikes. And I was always curious about how much chain you actually have on there. So a SRAM chain out the box, apparently the bigger size chain, you just have a single link more. That's all you need. Um, so it's not a crazy amount of chain. Whereas uh, if you're using a bigger size chain and you've got say a 34 chain ring on the front and you've got the, the 1050 on the rear, you're looking at taking out about four links. So there's only about five links more. It's nothing crazy. So not that much more weight if that was something that bothered you. I'm gonna get in touch with the guys at Active 5 Cycles because I think what they're doing looks really quite cool. Uh, so more information on that soon. Back to Henry. This week, we also saw the launch of Ergon's 2020 range. So they have a couple of new grips. They also have some new saddles. They've got the new SM Enduro range, which looks really, really cool. And dare I say it, it's a big call, but I think as a brand, they have executed the oil slick well. Saddle rails, nice and discreet, but cool. You know, the collars on grips, nice and discreet, but cool. If it's a whole cassette, and all that business, I'm not interested, but small bits, I can definitely get on board with. So they have a whole host of new products and some new colors for existing products. So the GE1 grip is one that gets the aforementioned new colors, and the GE is a really cool grip, and I wanna explain why. It's with ergonomics in mind, in the same way that, you know, riding clips or flats can change your body posture. What they did when they designed it 
is it's to actually enhance your bike fit really by positioning you in such a way you can ride your bike better. So check out their website. They've got loads of cool information, you know, saddle selectors and all sorts. And it's really, really cool. The level of depth and knowledge that those guys go into when they're building these bike parts. Now, they're not called Ergon for no reason. Ergon, ergonomic, really, really important. I think they make some great stuff. I actually did the bike check at the weekend where I was saying you could take my old SME saddle out of my cold dead hands, and I meant it. But now seeing this one, I'd certainly be interested to give it a try. The new SM Enduro saddle has more of a cutout in the middle section, so it might be a little bit more comfortable should that be a problem that you suffer from. All round, they look really cool. It would be good to give them a try if ever I get a chance. Okay, so now it's quiz time. All right, so every week for the time being, we're gonna be reading out three tech-related mountain bike questions and uh, we'll be giving you the answers later in the show. But it's really cool if you can try and get these off the top of your head uh, rather than having to Google them because it's a quiz and it's a bit more fun. Okay, so the first question. What does RTS stand for? And who made it for an extra bonus point for yourself there? Second question. Who invented forward geometry? Uh, and an extra bonus point if you can explain what forward geometry is. And the last question, and there might be a clue behind me, um, just throwing that one out there. What was the first mountain bike race called and why? Answers coming up later on the show, so be sure to stay tuned in. Over to Henry now for Top Mods and Bike Cave. Now it is time for Top Mods, which is my absolute favorite. And I've got to say, with all these countries in various degrees of isolation, we have been snowed under, but keep getting them in. I'm showing as many as I can today, but I mean, we have had so many submissions and it's absolutely fantastic to see. So thank you for sending them in. Keep sending them in. Use the uploader in the description below. Now, this week follows something of a theme. A lot of people have some time on their hands. So a lot of people have been painting stuff. So we're gonna do a painting special. First up, we have Jarrett, and he basically resprayed the lowers on his box of forks, and he did a pretty good job. Now, he mas masked over the XER of the word boxer to kind of give it a fresh finish, but honestly, I think that's pretty good. That's something you can do relatively easy if you're comfortable doing a lower leg service and obviously making sure paint isn't gonna get anywhere that it shouldn't, but super, super cool. Nice one. What else have we got? We got Seifel, I'm sorry if I butchered that, with his Turda RFX Pro version 4.0. Now he's in Singapore and I'm in, just look at that. It looks super, super cool. He can't have painted that himself, surely. He did. <gasps> look at it. I was, <laughs> I was watching it then, thinking, because I you know, organized the photos earlier on. I was looking at it thinking, no, wait a minute. This is a factory finish. This has gotten here by mistake. But look at that. It's like a Pantone match with the forks and stuff. That is solid. Next submission is from Paul, and this is his Mondraker Kaiser. Now the Kaiser were a really, really cool bike. So he bought a frame, forks and wheels, and he stripped the paint off of everything. And I mean, take a look at some of these pictures. He details the whole process and it looks really, really good. You know, you see it laying up with some primer. I mean, talk about factory fresh. It looks really, really, really good. Fantastic. So next we have one from Shane. So this is his transition covert. And I mean, just looks. I was gonna say actually, it's a bit of like a Star Wars theme. And there he's got the, got the sticker. Just looks great. Really, really tidy. I love your work, Shane. He's basically saying how he's actually a first responder. So he's not completely isolated at home, but during his off days, he decided to use them wisely. And boy, oh boy, hasn't he done that? Fantastic. Next, we have Antonio from Santiago in Chile. And this is his transition patrol, another transition. And he's basically taking it back to the raw how good does that look? I love raw alloy bikes, man. Honestly, 
So cool. Just looks so clean. Absolutely brilliant. Next we have from, from, oh no. I'm really gonna butcher this, I'm so sorry. Wojesh in Dublin. And he has a beautiful specialized stump jumper. Now this is one of two bikes we've got today that have a kind of pinky air about them. This one I think is done really well with that color fade. Looks super, super cool. I remember those stumpies, I really lusted after one big time. I thought they, well, they still are great bikes. And look at those mountains as well, beautiful. Absolutely love your work. How, how long did that take? Change all the bearings, but yeah, super, super cool. I wonder how long that took you to go. I don't know, is color fading a bike harder? I, I don't know, I imagine it would because you've got to wait for stuff to dry more, really. But no, it looks absolutely fantastic. Next, we have another submission from Dublin. Thomas with his Iron Horse Sunday, this, which is just fantastic. So this one is the second pink submission of the week. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. This one is definitely a bit pinker than the Stumpy, but I think it's pretty cool. Look at those old Mar Marzo forks. Just so sick, man, the triple eights. And I mean, it is pink. I'll grant you that, Thomas. But the finish is absolutely Honestly, Thomas, I think at times you were probably dicing with death a little bit here. I was worried it was gonna be a bit Avril Lavigne, do you know what I mean? But it actually looks really, really cool. And um, yeah, those old iron horses, so sick, man. Next, we have a submission from Peter in Kent. And this is actually a bike he built up for his girlfriend, Jeannie. And this is super cool. So he's actually gone to the effort of taking like an identical shot before and after, and what a transformation, going from you know a triple, you know kind of older, like kind of slightly older style rims, static seat post, you know long stem, and just just looks fantastic, and um, the decals are matched so perfectly to that linkage, and the finish just looks so so good, and that is it for another week's top mod. Thank you very much for getting them all in. Like I said, we've been somewhat snowed under and we really do appreciate you taking the time to get them in the uploader. Keep on going guys. Hopefully we can feature more on the show. We'll try and do the same next week where we just feature as much as we can because honestly, that drive is absolutely crammed with amazing submissions. Okay, now it's time for Rewind. This is where we go all old school. Uh, the whole point of Rewind is to look at where mountain biking came from. Bear in mind, it's a relatively young sport, yet we have some of the most advanced technology in it. But it all had to start somewhere, so we like to tell those stories. If you've got anything Rewind related, anything retro mountain biking, any old retro tech, literally anything at all, there's a link at the bottom of the screen there. So please send it our way. We'd love to explore that stuff on the show and show all our viewers all this sort of stuff. But this week, I've got something quite special. Now, I've got to say a huge thank you to Matt Armstrong for allowing us to uh, reference you and your images and all this sort of stuff. So, I was looking through his Instagram page, amongst others, and I saw what is possibly the nicest looking bike, I'm just going to throw it out there, that I've ever seen. Uh, this is it on screen. This is his uh, Yeti SB150, and it's a very, very special one-off bike, as you can probably tell by the colours on it. Now, it's actually referencing a Yeti Arc from 1992. Um, I took a shot of an Arc recently with some different color tires, but this is the Arc from 1992 on screen. Now, take a look at that gray and the classic Yeti blue color on the front there, and back to the SB150, and you can see where he's approached this from. Now, this is a really, really cool project. Now, I've just got a few shout outs. So the first one is for Scott Jackson. He took the images, which are unreal. And thanks, Scott, for uh, letting us use those. Uh, a link to Scott's Instagram, actually, is below. You've got to see some of the other stuff on his Instagram. Really cool stuff. Uh, also to Worldwide Cycle, because they actually did the build um, for Matt. So a big shout out to those guys as well. You, you've got a great Instagram page. Everyone should check that one out too. And that's going to be in, in the links underneath. So you can click straight through and check out some rad stuff on there. And finally, Air Tricks. Uh, you might have heard of them before. They did a, I think they did a paint job on Travis Pastrana's uh, e-bike with the Red Bull graphics. They did the paint job on this as well. And they've got some really cool stuff. And they tend to do a lot of motorsports. So definitely worth looking at when you're uh, scrolling through your Insta feed. Again, all three of those links are going to be in the description underneath. So make sure you check 
them out. But back to this, so I'm just gonna throw up the gallery of images because it's the most bonkers looking thing ever. Uh, so first up, the thing that really draws my eye is look at that Fox 36 on there. We're gonna get to the frame last because that is the best bit, but the Fox 36 is painted up like an old Manitou. Um, look at it, it just looks so cool. And then of course you've got Chris King hubs on there in purple, bit of a nod to, well in fact, a lot of people would have had Chris King hubs the first time around, but uh, other people would have had Ringlays and various other brands. Uh, there's SRAM access, man, I'm literally foaming at the mouth looking at the build on this stuff. Of course you've got like the uh, purple chain ring and the Yeti blue uh, one-up components front chain guide there. That blends in so well, you almost don't see it. Uh, that's a real classy little touch there, I love that. Um, there's also as well, something I didn't think you'd get these guys to do, but Renthal have got a purple anodized apex stem on there. Uh, it's not completely purple, they've done this really tastefully, so the clamps on the front of the handlebar there that you can see, uh, they're purple anodized there, <laughs> it just looks super trick. Yeti blue ODI grips, uh, and it's got Yeti written on the collars there as well. Uh, and there's also a purple wolf tooth dropper remote on there, so Real tasteful and like it's a real nice minimal cockpit setup there. Uh, of course, the access really helps with that because you've got losing a whole cable off the bike and all the hassle that goes with that. And when you look at the brakes as well, so the brakes on them, the RSCs there, uh, they've got the oil slick hardware, so it really matches in nicely with the cassette and everything else. I mean, just look, look at it. Okay, this thing's unreal. Now, even the graphics on the uh, the DT wheels there, on the rims, and on the Fox DHX2, they even match. Like, literally every detail is there, and that Ergon seat as well. It looks like it's supposed to be on that bike. Now, of course, it's got the Onza White Porcupines on there. Now, the Onza White Porcupine, all right, although it wasn't on the bike that I showed you earlier that had the Richie Z Max WCS ones in a sort of brownie red color. The white porcupine was the other tire of choice in that era. Uh, probably one of the most iconic tires of all time. The new tire, thankfully, is nothing like the old one. It just resembles it in terms of color with the tan walls and the white tread. I've got to say, I've, I've got to get a few of those sets. I've got to have some tucked away for a retro build that I will get around to at some point. Uh, they look super trick, really, really nice. Um, extra points as well for finding cable ties that match in as well. Look on the front fender there with the graphics on. Look at the cable ties, they're perfect Yeti color. And there we go, and there's the frame details of the Yeti on the head tube there, like the badge design. Wow, what a paint job. Uh, this has got to be, I think, the single coolest uh, super bike build I've ever seen. Now, I think something on GMBN Tech I need to be doing is doing some super bike builds. Uh, I want to do some, but also I want to explore some other people's builds like this, but do them in the flesh, see the bike, talk about the bike, see all that special stuff close up. So if you've got a build like this, or if you're working on a build, I would love to hear from you because we literally can't get enough of this. And people around the world want to see bikes like this because it really inspires people to, well, even if you can't afford to have a bike like this, to aspire to have one. Um, they look unreal. And I know there's a lot of you out there that spend a lot of time and money building these special bikes. So if you have anything for us, let us know. The email address is at the bottom of the screen, hellotech at gmbn.com. We would love to hear from you. And thanks again, Matt. Uh, love your work. Really cool. So, answer number one. What does RTS stand for? Rocker Tuned Suspension, which was the original design utilized by GT Bikes. The second question, who invented forward geometry? So it was released by Mondraker, but the kind of brains behind the operation was Cesar Rojo. So I suppose, you know, points for either one. <laughs> bit, of a, bit of a trick question. The third question, what was the first downhill racetrack called and why? Well, it was called the Repack which was in Marin County in California. So the reason it's called the Repack is because then they had brakes that were used inside the hub. Now the hub would get so hot, it would turn that grease, well, it would thin it out until it was oil just weeping out all over your bike. So every run, you would have to repack the hubs with fresh grease. Now, I'm not sure if you saw it, but Neil and Doddy did a super cool video about those original bikes and those original crazy guys that started off mountain biking as we know it today, and they even rode the Repack Downhill course. So link in the description to check that one out. And there we have it. There is another week's GMBN Tech Show. Thank you very much for watching. Now, go and watch that retro video. Honestly, it's a great video. Put on a cup of tea, just 
enjoy it. And as always guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, get in the comments, get in the uploader, let us know what you think about the tech we feature on this week's show. What do you think of the Narvana name? Is it the bridge too far? What do you reckon?